regret. Courage. Passion. Honor. The Indian Army first came here in 1948 and uh, when they marched up, there were a lot of casualties due to high altitude. There's acute mountain sickness, there's high altitude pulmonary edema where you get water in your lungs and there's high altitude cerebral edema uh, where you get water in your brain. All these uh, uh, latter two can be killer diseases. When a soldier is deployed at an altitude of 21,000 feet in the Siachen Glacier, there are chances he will collapse after suffering from breathlessness and sweating profusely. A soldier is suffering from high altitude pulmonary edema. Excess fluid has accumulated in his lungs and he has serious difficulty in breathing. The army chopper lands straight away at a helipad constructed within the premises of Leh's army hospital. Today we make sure that any of these people do not, uh, we do not lose them. While they are working so hard and putting their lives on the line, that we have to do the best for them. Pulmonary edema can prove fatal. The doctors at General Hospital in Leh are already in standby mode to handle this emergency. The casualty is rushed into the hospital hyperbaric chamber. The hyperbaric chamber is a sealed chamber which creates a high pressure environment higher than the atmospheric pressure at sea level. Okay, these are hyperbaric chambers inside which pressure can be increased to any desired amount. Uh, they have a limit of about five atmospheres. The whole idea of these chambers in a treatment in case of HAPO is to increase the pressure inside the body, the pressure of gases inside the body, the same as it would be at sea level. As a result, body responds as if it were at sea level. The patient recovers rapidly. We do not need to evacuate them. In fact, today we keep treat patients of HAPO and we keep them here. We do not even send them down. Out of danger are some of the most cherished words in the vocabulary of the Army Medical Corps doctors, driven by their motto of Sarve Santo Niramaya. Meaning, we all be free from disease and disability. Combat casualties come to you in a case where they are they may be grievously injured, or bullet injuries, blast injuries, and here time is of the essence. We have to give urgent care at the earliest to ensure that we do not lose any patient. The Indian Army Medical Corps serves the country's troops in the forwardmost line of contact. They deal with wartime casualties and heal the wounded, despite grave risks to their personal safety. By virtue of being at the front line, the Army Medical Corps personnel enjoy combatant status. Our doctors also command our own establishments and even in war, we command our establishments and move along with the combat groups right behind the front lines to provide them all sorts of medical care. All the army doctors, nurses and paramedics receive basic military and technical training to operate and survive in the battlefield. The army base hospitals are counted amongst the most advanced medical care units in the country. These multidisciplinary hospitals not only look after the medical needs of serving army men, but also of their families and even retired soldiers. Our motto is that if any casualty comes to us alive, we will not let him die in this hospital. And I can say it very confidently, we will retrieve him and bring him back and make him a productive member of society again. The army base hospital in Srinagar is a very busy place all through the year. 
It handles an assortment of casualties and health problems aggravated by the extremely cold weather conditions and the difficult terrain. I have held the Indian Army Jawan in such high regard that uh, nothing I do will ever be enough for them. We are totally geared up to provide emergency medical care, not only in battle casualties, but also in any possible mass disaster situation. The Army hospitals have done a human service to the nation by attending even to civilian casualties during natural calamities like floods, earthquakes and tsunami. General Hospital in Leh treated scores of civilians affected by the flash floods in August 2010. With the district civil hospital lying in shambles after the cloud burst, the victims of this natural calamity had no place to get their injuries treated. The army doctors worked non-stop attending casualties, civilian as well as military. The civil hospital, the SNM hospital was totally defunct that day because it collapsed. The sludge had gone into the hospital, their OT was non-functional and we had one surgical team. And on that night, we conducted something around uh, 20 op major operations in this hospital. And that was done by a single surgeon and an anesthetist. The army had also commissioned several makeshift hospitals in flash flood affected areas to provide on the spot emergency medical assistance. In fact, the army medical corps has been providing healthcare services in several forward areas along India's international borders, even during peacetime. And it's not just in the border areas, but also in Delhi, at the Army's Research and Referral Hospital, popularly known as RR Hospital. It is one of the finest and most advanced hospitals in India. It is a multi-speciality hospital with state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment, and it caters to all the three defense services. It is also responsible for looking after the health and well-being of the President of India, who is also the supreme commander of all the armed forces. It would not be an exaggeration to call ASC the lifeline of Indian Army. In wartime, these men and their vehicles are one of the preferred targets of the enemy, whose aim is to somehow break the supply chain and starve the frontline troops of food, fuel, medicines and ammunition. Conquering adversities is a part and parcel of a soldier's life in the Army Service Corps. We make sure that the troops in the most forward post, they don't have to look back for their logistic support and uh, we push everything forward. The ASC is closely associated with the planning and execution of all the logistical support operations of the Army, which makes it indispensable during both war and peace. As we all know that our troops march on their stomach. So we make sure that uh, their stomachs are not empty and uh, the security of our nation is not compromised because of the want of logistic support. As the oldest and largest administrative arm of the Indian Army, the Army Service Corps is driven by its motto of Seva Asmakam Dharmam, that is, service is my creed. ASC is also responsible for the issuing of fresh rations to the entire army. The planning and logistics involved in supplying rations to such a large force is more difficult than it sounds. The first challenge that we have is underdeveloped roads and tracks. So in that kind of roads and tracks we have to sustain our armed forces. And uh, then we have enemy observation which is actually very risky when we are actually going through operation that time we have to counter that particular problem also. Not the ones to be disheartened easily. The ASC officers and their men dodge the enemy using a variety of tactics which include sending dummy convoys and to reach the soldiers posted in some of the most inaccessible areas, the ASC employs a wide variety of means to keep them going, come what may. The ASC also uses animals, helicopters and aircraft to transport and drop stores at the point of action. We as ASC, we are responsible for providing those troops with water, with ration, with fuel, oil or lubricants, with uh, ammunition uh, for whatever requirement. 
So that is why I think it is very important for us to exist so that we can support the troops who are ahead of us. It's an ecstatic feeling that you can feed the troops who are securing these great heights where very few have been able to go till now. The maximum height which generally the drivers have to travel for this, uh, providing this logistics support is from 18,000 to 19,000 feet. The Khardungla Pass remains snowbound for a large part of the year, but that is hardly a deterrent for this convoy. Upon encountering snow, the soldiers quickly mount snow chains on their truck's tires and keep moving. They realize the importance of the job at hand, of reaching their destination where their fellow soldiers are waiting for the supplies. Each of these trucks is manned by a driver only. Moving uphill along the twisting and turning narrow paths in the Himalayas, the convoy has a trained repairman to tackle vehicle breakdowns. One of the vehicles in the convoy seems to have broken down. In a display of camaraderie and teamwork, the entire convoy hauls to get this vehicle going. Ignoring the glacial chill all around, these men surely know how to keep up their tempo. YEMI stands for Code of Electronics and Mechanical Engineering. Nothing else can be done now. I'm dead. Next Monday, 10 p.m. Akya presents Nat Geo Mission Army Desh Ke Rakshak, powered by Samsung Mobile, only on the National Geographic Channel. These trucks belonging to the Army Service Corps are waiting at this Army Ordnance Corps depot to pick up stores for the troops manning forward posts in the Kargil sector. It is an uh, organization which uh, looks after the complete logistics of the entire army, uh, which is basically providing for everything from a pin to a tank. The Army Ordnance Corps is a logistical branch tasked with provisioning and acquiring all stores to raise and maintain a fully battle-ready army at all times. They also make available spare parts for all the weapons and equipment used by the Indian Army. Barring medicines, fuel and fodder, the Ordnance Depots stock everything that is used by the soldiers. It's a mix of all things. I am also a factory, I also manufacture, I also stock. I also provision, I also issue, and I also dispose of. In addition, the ordnance officers are also responsible for safe disposal of scrap and condemned stores, including all army vehicles. The complete inventory of the ordnance would be more than three lakhs. It is everything, be it ammunition,